For over a century, farmers have depended on the global fertilizer industry to nourish their crops. But that industry, rooted in fossil fuels, has also tied food security to volatile energy markets. Every ton of ammonia fertilizer produced from natural gas emits nearly two tons of carbon dioxide. The process that feeds humanity also warms the planet. Now, a quiet revolution is underway. Farmers are beginning to produce their own hydrogen, not in vast industrial complexes, but right on their land, using the same sunlight that grows their crops. It is a profound shift, one that turns rural communities from passive energy consumers into active energy producers. The idea sounds radical, but it is already happening. Across Kenya, India, and the American Midwest, small modular electrolyzers and green ammonia plants are emerging among fields and barns. These systems, powered by solar or wind energy, split water into hydrogen and oxygen, then combine the hydrogen with nitrogen from the air to make ammonia, an essential fertilizer. Instead of importing fertilizer that travels thousands of kilometers by ship and truck, farmers can now produce it on site. Instead of relying on diesel or natural gas, they can power their operations with clean hydrogen. For the first time in history, agriculture and energy are merging in a way that could redefine both sectors. At the heart of this transformation is a new type of technology. Traditional ammonia plants built around the Haber-Bosch process require constant heat and pressure. They consume enormous quantities of fossil fuel and electricity and operate efficiently only at large scale. The innovation of companies like Talisag lies in miniaturizing that process. Their systems are designed to run dynamically, responding to intermittent renewable power. During sunny or windy hours, electrolyzers produce hydrogen. When power dips, the system slows or pauses without damage. The hydrogen is stored in small tanks or fed directly into a compact synthesis loop that converts it into ammonia. Everything fits inside a few shipping containers, simple to transport, install, and maintain. For farmers, the benefits go far beyond sustainability. They gain independence. Fertilizer costs fluctuate wildly with global gas prices, often doubling or tripling after geopolitical shocks. Transport delays can cripple planting schedules. By producing ammonia locally, farmers gain control over one of their biggest expenses. A farm in Kenya's Rift Valley or a co-op in Iowa can now set its own prices, secure its own supply, and stabilize its production against market volatility. In some regions, the economics are already favorable. High solar yields, low labor costs, and expensive imports make green ammonia cheaper than conventional fertilizer. Technically, the numbers are compelling. Producing one ton of ammonia requires about 178 kilograms of hydrogen, and to make that hydrogen via electrolysis, you need roughly 50 kilowatt hours of electricity per kilogram. That translates to around 9 to 12 megawatt hours per ton of ammonia. A one ton per day unit therefore requires a steady supply of 10 to 12 megawatt hours each day. In equatorial regions like Kenya, where sunlight is abundant and consistent, that means a solar array of roughly 2 to 3 megawatts peak capacity, precisely what Tolisag installed for the Kenya Nut Company's facility in Naivasha. In Iowa, where the sun is less reliable, a 1 megawatt solar field paired with grid backup achieves similar daily output. Both configurations prove that renewable-based ammonia production can be scaled to local resources without losing efficiency. Water use, another critical factor, is surprisingly small. Each kilogram of hydrogen requires 9 liters of deionized water, so one ton of ammonia consumes roughly 1.6 cubic meters less than a single day of irrigation for many farms. Air provides nitrogen through a small compressor and separation unit. The total footprint, including solar panels and containers, occupies less than five hectares. For many farmers, that's a fraction of a field. And while traditional ammonia plants sit inside industrial zones, these systems hum quietly beside crops, emitting only water vapor and oxygen. Safety remains paramount, Ammonia is corrosive and toxic, demanding careful handling. Yet the scale of these systems makes them manageable. The Kenya Nut Project, for example, underwent a full environmental impact assessment and includes gas detectors, automatic shutdown valves, ventilation fans, and secondary containment for tanks. 
local emergency crews received training and equipment. The plant's rural location with ample open land and prevailing wind enhances safety margins. After a year of operation, the record speaks for itself. Zero incidents, stable performance, and full community support. The social impact is as important as the technical success. In Kenya, the system provides steady fertilizer for macadamia and coffee orchards, employs dozens of local workers, and demonstrates how African agribusiness can leapfrog old infrastructure. Instead of waiting for imported fuel and fertilizer, farmers can now generate both from renewable energy. It's a model of circular resilience. Sunlight powers hydrogen, hydrogen powers crops, and crops sustain communities. The same concept is spreading to other parts of Africa, where organizations see green ammonia as both a climate solution and a path to food sovereignty. Across the Atlantic, the Landis Cooperative in Iowa is proving that the model also works in mature agricultural economies. Their one-ton-per-day pilot, powered by solar panels and the regional grid, began production in 2025. Early field trials show identical yields compared to conventional fertilizer, but with near zero carbon emissions. The cooperative structure spreads costs and ensures reliable demand. Every farmer who buys fertilizer from Landis effectively participates in clean hydrogen production. The next step, already planned, is a 20-ton per day facility in Eagle Grove, integrating wind power and grid balancing. Here, U.S. policy plays a major role. The Inflation Reduction Act's 45V tax credit rewards low-carbon hydrogen with up to $3 per kilogram, equivalent to cutting green ammonia's cost by more than $500 per ton. For co-ops and agribusinesses, that's the difference between a pilot and a business model. Economically, the equation is shifting fast. In regions with expensive imports, local production can save hundreds of dollars per ton. In the U.S., where energy costs are stable but environmental compliance is tightening, green ammonia offers a hedge against future carbon pricing. Analysts predict that by 2030, as electrolyzer and solar prices fall, decentralized ammonia could undercut conventional fertilizer, even without subsidies. Once that happens, adoption could accelerate rapidly. The implications extend beyond fertilizer. The same hydrogen that feeds the ammonia loop can power tractors, irrigation pumps, or fuel cells. Some farms already use a portion of their hydrogen directly for backup power, storing it as compressed gas. In hybrid systems, the ammonia itself can be cracked back into hydrogen for fuel cell electricity, providing true energy independence. A farmer who produces both food and clean fuel becomes a cornerstone of the rural energy economy. Operationally, these systems are surprisingly simple to run. Electrolyzers operate autonomously, controlled by software that adjusts output based on sunlight or grid prices. Remote diagnostics track performance, and predictive maintenance prevents downtime. Spare parts are standardized. Because everything is modular, expanding capacity is as easy as adding another container. This scalability makes green hydrogen accessible not just to corporations, but to cooperatives, universities, and even large individual farms. Feasibility in the end rests on integration. Hydrogen and ammonia production must align with farm cycles, weather, and local infrastructure. During planting seasons, fertilizer demand peaks. During harvest, power demand might rise for processing. Smart scheduling and storage ensure that the plant runs efficiently year-round. In Kenya, the ammonia output aligns with macadamia fertilization cycles, while excess electricity feeds irrigation pumps. In Iowa, the cooperative synchronizes hydrogen production with renewable curtailment periods, monetizing power that would otherwise go unused. The most profound change, however, may be cultural. For generations, farmers have seen energy as something bought, not produced. Now they're realizing that the same land that grows crops can also generate hydrogen. Solar arrays and wind turbines are becoming as integral to rural landscapes as barns and silos. Hydrogen tanks and ammonia reactors are joining tractors and irrigation systems as essential farm tools. In this new paradigm, the farmer becomes not just a cultivator of soil, but a steward of energy, a producer of both calories and kilowatts. 
this shift is not without challenges. Capital costs remain high, and financing small projects in developing countries requires new models. Partnerships between technology firms, local cooperatives, and impact investors are emerging to fill that gap. Training programs must prepare technicians to operate and maintain the systems. Policy support must extend beyond subsidies to include streamlined permitting, safety standards, and export frameworks. But the direction is clear. Hydrogen is leaving the laboratory and entering the farmyard. The environmental benefits are staggering. Replacing fossil ammonia with green ammonia could reduce global emissions by nearly half a gigaton of CO2 per year. On a single farm scale, that's equivalent to taking hundreds of vehicles off the road. More importantly, it shows that climate action need not come at the expense of productivity. In Kenya and Iowa alike, yields remain constant while carbon intensity plummets. Rural economies gain jobs, stability, and resilience. Energy, fertilizer, and food become interconnected pillars of sustainability. By the late 2020s, this trend could redefine the global energy map. Instead of exporting crude oil, nations could export green ammonia made from sunlight and air. Instead of importing fertilizers, rural regions could achieve self-sufficiency. In a world where geopolitical tensions often revolve around resources, distributed hydrogen production offers decentralization and peace. Farmers empowered with energy independence strengthen not only their livelihoods but their nation's stability. The symbolism is powerful. For centuries, agriculture has been the backbone of civilization, feeding populations and shaping cultures. Now it is poised to play a similar role in the clean energy era. Hydrogen connects ancient practices of cultivation with modern technology, closing the loop between the biological and the chemical, the local and the global. A farmer producing hydrogen is not just adopting a new tool, they're embodying a new philosophy that sustainability and self-reliance can coexist. From the macadamia orchards of Naivasha to the cornfields of Iowa, the story is unfolding in real time. Farmers are proving that clean energy doesn't have to start in cities or factories. It can begin where civilization itself began, in the soil. The green hydrogen revolution is no longer abstract policy or distant promise. It's happening today, one farm at a time. And in that transformation lies one of the most hopeful narratives of our century. The people who feed the world are now helping power it too. If you want to learn how to develop, finance, and scale projects like these, whether you're an energy consultant, investor, or visionary farmer, visit https h 2 hubreneenergycom At h 2 hubreneenergycom you'll find professional training, feasibility templates, and financial models that guide you step-by-step -step through the process of building real hydrogen and ammonia projects. From technical design to project finance, the course gives you the tools to turn hydrogen potential into practical, profitable reality. The rural hydrogen revolution has begun. The next step is yours.